tips to boost your electrolysis and your hydrogen production. First of all, thank you very, very, very much for all your su subscri subscriptions. It's a very difficult word for a German guy. Subscribing is for free for you, but very important for us to gain reach and maybe to make this time and effort we put into these videos someday worth it. So please subscribe. And now let's get started to how to improve your hydrogen production and what it is actually inside an electrolyzer. So the first and the easiest tip to increase your hydrogen production is expanded metal. In German it's called Streckmetall or in English also steel mesh. I will put the link in the description below. It is nothing more than metal which has been torn apart and has a, has a huge surface, this metal. Uh, you put this on the anode sides where the hydrogen is made. Uh, for Brown's gas electrolyzers, please take care that this mesh you will put on the anode side doesn't touch the cathode side. So if the amperage is too high, the gas bubbles here will just avoid that the water is, <laughs> is it's hard to, to try. The contact between the water, which is electrically charged through your photovoltaic system, for instance, uh, cannot react anymore because there's only hydrogen gas at this point, so only low amperages. If you can see inside your electrolyzer because you have like a plexiglass uh, side of it and you see so many bubbles that uh, the amperage is lowering, get it lower, get it slower, get it more efficient because else you will lose a lot of power. Potassium hydroxide. I know all of you guys just put this cheap stuff into the water, into the distilled water, which is not cheap. So potassium hydroxide or Kali Lauge is, um, is the opposite of an acid, but it is a caustic lye. That's uh, at least what I saw through the translator. And it is dangerous for skin contact. So if you play around with, uh, with this, Please consider it doesn't help very much because you can also use deionized water. Deionization is um, done through resin. So it's like a resin and this takes out the ions of your water, thus the reaction of a PEM electrolyzer is increasing, you have less debris, you have less to clean. Therefore, of course, you need a filter case, uh, which looks a little bit like this. You put the uh, uh, ion exchange stuff in here and the water comes in here and goes through the filter to the exit without ions. Electrolyzer designs. Lots of you think an electrolyzer looks like this, you know, just a square piece of metal, which is also really good because you have less waste material of your stainless steel or even titanium or whatever you use. But this has a major um, problem. It is not resistant to pressure. So as we all know, pressure is at every point uh, inside a vessel perpendicular to the shape, the round shape is the best for pressure. But also if we speak of the round shape, the gasket material is very important because the gasket material not only serves as a sealant between exterior and interior, it is also the place where you can create 
channels. Let's say this is one of your gasket and this is the other one of your gaskets. You can use a tunnel here and a tunnel here and here take the oxygen on the cathode side and the hydrogen on the anode side. So what about the material? I will put all the links in the description below. So you could uh, use rubber gaskets, which is very cheap, but rubber gaskets are sh They are very flexible, so if there is pressure, and uh, here are the screws, for instance, uh, the rubber gasket will just uh, open up at a certain point and you have a leak here. I put links in the description for fiberglass reinforced um, gaskets. Don't use graphite, you can use PTFE, but it should be rigid and it should be thick. Yes, because remember this uh, mesh you, you want to put here in between this space to increase the surface has also a certain thickness. So if we think about hydrogen, we all know where it comes from. It comes from water and the electrolysis process. But after the electrolysis process, the gas is filled to 99, 95 mass percent with water. So you have the gas, the gas H2, which is saturated with 95% of gaseous, like a cloud or whatever you call this moisture. What does it mean? You have liquid water, if you use the hydrogen gas for your engine, you have it in your engine. The last time the piston goes down and the hydrogen is put into the engine, but you shut the engine down, you will have this gas in the piston. What happens? The motor cools down, the gas will get cold, the saturation point will be reached and you have water in your cylinder. This is corrosive, so I would, wouldn't recommend this. It's very easy to reduce the moisture in your hydrogen. Is uh, You need a uh, a filter uh, thingy, but this one needs to be pressure resistant. Thus, I put the link in the description below for a, a filter vessel uh, which is resistant to 150 bars, I don't know in PSI. And what uh, you put in sil silica gel, orange or whatever color, I put the link of my favorite one in here. This changes the color as soon as, so these are balls uh, and they will change the color as soon as they are saturated. The gas, the hydrogen gas with the water flows through here and comes out a little bit drier, yes? This is the dry side, yeah? Uh, you, you can screw, unscrew this and bake the, uh, the, the flakes. Uh, to dry them again, they will change the color, you put them in again, you repeat the process, you always have dry hydrogen and no corrosion inside your engines or no water inside your gas cylinders, which you don't want either. either. So, and now the sixth and final point, how to increase your hydrogen production and actually the use out of the hydrogen is using a membrane. Yes, I know that's where you all struggle because you cannot DIY a membrane, at least you think that. I put in the description below a DIY version of an onion exchange membrane, which you can make um, with some kind of a liquid um, liquid uh, plastics, let's call it plastic, I'm not a chemist. Uh, we know this material from uh, fiberglassing, you use this as a separation material. Um, but also you can buy a professional membrane 
And uh, I put the link in the description below for a membrane, which is about 100 bucks per, uh, let's say, six square centimeters or something. Uh, it is expensive. It is a Nafion membrane, which is, uh, let's say, a, a plastic. I don't know the, the right term in English. It is a plastic which lets through gaseous hydrogen, but not the water. So here's your anode, here's your electricity, yes. And then you finally have something to compress, something which is not dangerous and something you can use for either a engine, a hydrogen converted engine, or you can use it in a fuel cell to make electricity and heat. And within this professional membrane, you get the catalyst. And the catalyst is the last point where you can really boost and really boost your hydrogen production because the catalyst will be a noble metal which is, actually it is printed like with a roller in, a, in some kind of, I think they call it carbon black, yeah? And you have the iridium, iridium, I don't know the English term, and the platinum, and they use the, the powder, the platinum powder or the iridium powder, mix it with some kind of ink, yeah? That's why it's called carbon black, because this is uh, black, and there you get a very huge surface of iridium and platinum. And what does it do? It lowers the reaction um, energy. So the energy you put in here through the plus and uh, here the minus pole is about 4.5 kilowatt hours, I think, per norm cubic meter uh, of hydrogen. This is the average number, which is not really effective because we all know the calorific value of this one cubic meter is very low. This would be my last tip. Uh, I don't know if you want to try this with platinum. For instance, you can buy platinum sheets, like very, very thin sheets. Somehow you, uh, you uh, make it to a powder or you buy the powder. I don't know if you can make this catalyst yourself. I've, I've put you the, the membrane with the catalyst. It's both sides platinum, which still decreases the energy because if, if you get no catalyst, you are, I, I think, maybe around double the energy input for half the output. So thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and see you next time.